The following is a presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Cougars basketball is on the air. No look behind the back to Robinson for three, and that goes! Jackson Robinson! This is Cougar Pregame Live, brought to you by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To get you ready for BYU versus the University of Denver, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome once again into Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, the BYU Cougars back home at the Marriott Center, hosting the Denver Pioneers. Well, for the first time this season, BYU coming off a loss. Yep, the Cougars dropped a 73-69 game at Utah this past Saturday. It was BYU's only defeat, so the Cougars sit at 8-1 and one on the season. And we can sit here and rehash some of the reasons why BYU lost the game, but nobody wants to relive the loss to Utah. Yep, it stinks to lose to Utah any time, and it hurts that they can say they're the only team that has beaten BYU so far, but the reality is the loss didn't hurt the Cougars. Despite the loss, BYU only dropped four spots in the AP poll. They went from 14 to 18. They stayed at number eight in Ken Palm, and they went from first in the net rankings to just third. It's not a bad loss in the metrics, and it's not a bad loss in terms of postseason play. The biggest reason that it hurts, and let's all face the facts, was that it be- was because it was to the team in red. That's the reason why it hurts so bad. So with that, and yes, it's just one game, but BYU has a very real chance of running the table in non-conference play and heading into the Big 12 season with just one loss. The Cougars, though, they have to handle their business tonight, and it starts with Denver. Now, Denver comes to Provo with a record of 6-4. and four. The Pioneers haven't played since last Wednesday when they lost at Colorado State. Denver plays in the Summit League, where they're picked to finish last in the nine-team conference. Tonight will be the 68th all-time meeting between BYU and Denver, and the first time these two programs have met since 1999. What were you doing back in 1999? Tommy Bruner is the Pioneers' best player, and he's also one of the country's best scorers. Bruner ranks third in the nation in scoring at 24 points per game. He also gets to the free throw line a lot, ranking 10th in the nation in free throw attempts. There's also some uh, local flavor with Denver. Jackson Brenchley spent four seasons at Utah, appearing in 95 games up on the hill. He's third on the team in scoring. Also, Tyson Garf is a bench player for the Pioneers, and he's from Kaysville and played previously at Salt Lake Community College. Time now for our pregame player spotlight interview, and tonight you're going to get to hear from Trey Stewart. Trey averaging about five points and three rebounds in 15 minutes of play so far this season. He finished with two points, four boards, and an assist in Saturday's loss at Utah, and that's where our conversation began I asked Trey how the team has bounced back this week at practice after a disappointing result in Salt Lake City. Yeah, the loss of Utah, obviously it stings. Like, you don't want that to be our loss. But uh, it was kind of a cool vibe. Like, the day after, two days after the game, is like, I mean, we lost by two, and we played a terrible game. Like, we looked at the film Monday morning, and we were like, how on earth did we come within two? Mm -hmm. Like, we played bad. So we're very optimistic about the future, obviously. So everyone was just like, chalk it up as a rough little game. We recognize those little adjustments, those small little things that make us special that we didn't do. So we're just like, we're just going to go do those next time. So everyone's pretty optimistic. I don't know how much you guys pay attention to it. We certainly pay attention to it because it's kind of what we do. And it helps us in terms of the metrics is what I'm talking about. It helps us kind of get an idea of, of where the team is in terms of the national perspective. The loss did not hurt you guys at all. You dropped a couple of spots in the AP, but Ken Palm, you stayed the same. Net, you dropped only two spots. Like, is it not lost on you that even with the loss, you guys have accomplished something to start this year? Yeah, that's the thing is we're very uh, task-focused rather than kind of the outcome. So we have a lot of these tasks that we're looking to accomplish. And, like, granted, we didn't play the best, but, like, we had 17 offensive rebounds. Like, there's just, like, little tiny stats like that that make us so special that we're still doing, even though we did lose. There's, like, other little things like we could have gotten to the corner better. We could have got to second size on our ball screen offense. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it feels good yeah. looking at the numbers still. Have you given it much thought as to what has gone into the start to the season for you guys? Uh, yeah, really, again, it's just all these objectives that coaches have put up or tasks that coaches have put up. It's like, hey, we're going to wedge. We're going to do all these other things. Wedging means like going to the offensive glass. What are the tiny little things that we have? 
to communicate on defense, simple ball screen coverages that we go into, just these tiny little things that we all just have engraven in our bodies through the summer. We're like seeing them come to fruition and be like, oh, these things really do help us. Like when they were talking about in the summer, like I remember when Fennell first introduced like some of the ideas, we were like, eh, like, okay, like we'll, we'll do it and see how it goes. And they've been working. So it's just good to see them like actually work in a game sense. You mentioned Coach Fennell, and he brought this up, but I've also heard this from a couple of other people. You guys had your foreign trip, and you guys were able to go. Obviously, there's some basketball, but it's also team camaraderie. That, that's a big part of it. He and a couple of other people have mentioned how important he thinks that has been yeah. to the way you guys have started this year. Man, we all best friends up in here, and it's something special because like, we walk around, and I can literally be in a room alone with any of our th guys and have a 20-minute conversation with them about anything. Um, that foreign trip definitely, like, was a good fuel for that. In the summer, we already had a good, like, foundation. And, like, last year, we all spent time together, got to know each other a little bit. But then this year, we really know each other. Like, we were in Croatia for a little bit. We were doing all these fun little things together. And, like, just spending memories with someone really, like, leaves a part of you with them. So I have so many, like, pieces of my guys in me where it's like, oh, like, I know that my guy J-Mac likes this. I know that they, they, uh, I know Spence is doing this on the weekends with his wife, like, you just know your team, so now on the court that obviously helps because you're cheering for them because they're literally like your family. Your confidence level on the court has been noticeable since the beginning of the season. Did you do anything different heading into this year? How did you personally prepare for this season? Because it's certainly showing on the court. Thank you. Uh, definitely a lot with my sports psychologist, Michael Larson, that dude. Oh, my life to that dude. <laughs> um, just because, yeah, again, the confidence is such a huge thing, and it can waver, and there's so many different aspects of it. But really, it's just an everyday process of just trying to figure it all out and kind of really be comfortable in my own skin. And I feel like I'm understanding my role a lot better, and I'm cool with whatever coach puts me in. Like, if I get 10 minutes, 6 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm ready for whatever. Um, but really, I just go out there with a carefree mentality of just, I'm going to do what I've been working my butt off all summer to train my body to do. Okay, I wanted to ask you, and this is something that happened a while ago, but it got a lot of attention, and talking about the D-Wade thing. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I've heard you talk about the situation because you were obviously were able to present him with a gift, yeah. which he was able to wear, which was awesome. Right. Can you take us through that story and how that came to be? Because that, that's an unbelievable story. Yeah, so I got into sewing in June. I decided to throw a fashion show where I sewed 20 outfits, like top to bottom. I sewed it all. And it was really cool to see that come to life. And Ryan Smith came to that, Pope brought Ryan, and Ryan loved it all. So he was like, once D. Wade was coming... Ryan hit up Pope and was like, have Trey make something for weight. And that's the opportunity of a lifetime. I guess the fashion icon, like I could have asked for a better wow. canvas to make something for. So he came to speak at one of his, Ryan has this like lecture class yep. here. Came to speak of that, got to give him the gift there. And then he ended up coming to practice the next day wearing the piece. And all that was just like such a cool moment of like, we, cause in the, in, when D Wade was talking, he was talking about like being prepared for moments. Like you work out, you do all these things to be ready for like the big moment. And I had my moment to make a piece for Dwayne Wade. And I put in so much work. Like I did the whole fast show and everything. So I was ready for my moment. And it was just really like a blessing to just get the opportunity and just see it all work out. I'm assuming you were able to have a, a personal conversation with him. And, and I'm not, obviously, you don't need to divulge anything that was personal like that. But what was that, the ability to be able to have a conversation with a guy like that that took the time to come here and then spend some time with you, what did that mean to you? Yeah, it was just cool to, like, have him walk in practice the next day and we already had that connection because, like, I remember I would pretend to be him in my driveway when I was a kid. Like, that's the guy. But then you're sitting there and, like, he walks into practice and he knows you and he daps you up and is like, oh, how you doing? And then just like, hey, yo, this fire. Like, thank you for the peace and just, like, talking about it. And just, like, having that, like, interaction of just, like, or, like, friends. Like, we, I know he knows me. I know him, obviously. And this is like such a crazy feeling, and it was just so cool. What role does fashion play in your life right now, and what role do you maybe want it to play moving forward? Yeah, so really every day after practice, I go home and sew. I sew for probably, I try to get four, and a half, four or five hours in there. Four to five hours? Yeah, I don't sleep that much. I should probably get more sleep. <laughs> but I do a lot of sewing um, just because like, I have a lot of great opportunities right now to make like my art for people. So it really is like my life right now where I get my schoolwork done. I've worked so hard to get my schoolwork done as fast as I can. And then I'm going to make art because I know that that's really like how I'm going to share my mind with the world. 
like basketball is really cool. I love basketball. Don't get it twisted. Some people would be like, oh, you should focus more time on this. I'm, I'm handling my business here. <laughs> and then I handle my business here so I can go home and handle my other business. So it's just a blessing that I'm in an environment right here where I have so many great people who are willing to mentor me and give me the opportunity to make what I want to make. Well, speaking of handling your business, up next is Denver. Seems appropriate to be ways taking on the Pioneers. What's the scouting report on this team? What are you guys expecting Wednesday night? Uh, they got a high-level point guard who can score. He can shoot the ball. Uh, they got another shooter, their foreman. He's a very talented uh, shooter as well. Really, they're a good, solid team. They've had some success this season, so we're just ready to look out go there. They're looking to go out there and do what we do. I mean, we have, we see those little tiny adjustments. They lost us the Utah game. I don't want to say lost us, but damaged us in the Utah game. We're going to fix those, and we're going to continue to show who we are. Trey, appreciate it. Uh, fantastic interview, as always. Uh, good luck uh, this week, and certainly good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, man. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. That was Trey Stewart. How about that? Getting to hear that story about D. Wade, I think most people had probably heard that when it had gone down. Maybe you didn't know some of the specifics, but what an unbelievable opportunity for Trey Stewart to be able to. And, and like he said, it's his art, um, the, the, the products that he creates and he sews, um, to be able to present that to Dwayne Wade and then to have him the very next day come back and wear it. And, wow, what an unbelievable experience for, uh, for Trey Stewart and for, for the BYU basketball team to have Dwayne Wade come uh, probably it's probably at least a month ago, maybe even a little bit longer than that now, uh, come to practice and hang out with them and, and speak to them. Really, really cool stuff. All right, one of the big stories today, something I have not touched on yet, but I want to get into it now because it certainly has BYU ramifications. Uh, earlier today, a court ruling has cleared the way for NCAA players on their second transfer to be able to play immediately without a transfer waiver at least for the next two weeks. So a U.S. District judge in West Virginia issued an order barring the NCAA from enforcing its transfer waiver process for the next two weeks, so for the next 14 days, meaning players that had their transfer waiver denied, so if you've already had a claim in and it's been denied, or you're waiting for your transfer waiver to be accepted or denied, um, like BYU's Marcus Adams is what I'm getting to, uh, you're immediately eligible to play as of right now. The NCAA responded a bit earlier saying, quote, as a result of today's decision impacting Division I student athletes, the association will not enforce the year in residency requirement for multi-team, multi-time transfers and will begin notifying member schools, end quote. So a hearing on the restraining order will be held in two weeks on December 27th and a more permanent ruling is expected at that point. So what this means for BYU specifically, because the NCAA is not going to fight this and the judge has said for the next two weeks all of these players are eligible immediately, Marcus Adams, the transfer who started at Kansas, then transferred to Gonzaga and is now with BYU, is eligible to play over the next two weeks. I can tell you now uh, that uh, Greg Rubel, able to speak with Mark Pope uh, and Marcus Adams will not play tonight, Um, so you will not see him on the court tonight. He is eligible for the next two weeks, but he will not see time tonight. Coach Pope will get into more detail on that when he talks with Greg Rubel. Also, an update on Dawson Baker, who we will not see tonight, but certainly getting closer. So you'll get updates from Coach Pope on both of those situations uh, a little bit later. In fact, in about 20 minutes from now, uh, you'll hear that conversation with Greg Rubel and the head coach of the Cougars, Mark Pope. All right, speaking of Mark, Mark Durant is going to join us next. It's our courtside conversation. Mark Durant will join from the Marriott Center when we return on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Mountain America Cougar pregame live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar pregame live is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The Cougars back at the Marriott Center tonight hosting the pioneers of Denver and one of our pioneers. He is Mark Durant joining us from the Marriott Center. It's our courtside conversation. Good evening, Mark. How are you tonight? Jason Shepard, man, I'm doing well. It's always a pleasure to talk to you coming off that rough loss, but (laughs) in honor of Taylor Swift's birthday, T-Swizzle, as I call her, mm-hmm. 
We're just going to shake it off, man. I like it. Shake it off. We're moving forward. And uh, it should be a fun one tonight. Denver plays an exciting style of basketball. Shoot a lot of threes. Got, got a couple really good players. So I'm looking forward to tonight. Get, get that bad taste out of my mouth. That's right. That's all players want to do. After a loss, just get back out on the court and uh, try and, uh, and rectify the situation and start a new winning streak, which I fully expect BYU to be able to do over the rest of the non-conference. We will get to that. I do want to ask you this question. You're a lawyer. Uh, what do you make of the news that, that according to this ruling, Marcus Adams is eligible to play for the next two weeks? Uh, now, we, we know he's not going to play tonight, but the, the, the judge, the U.S. Uh, District Court judge in West Virginia, says the NCAA cannot enforce that rule. The NCAA says for the next two weeks they will not. So if you're a two-time transfer, which Marcus Adams is, you are immediately eligible to play over the next two weeks. What, what could this potentially mean for BYU if we see him? Yeah, well, you know, that ruling is kind of another hit to the NCAA and just their ability to try and have any authority over college basketball, which is waning. But I, I think it's an interesting ruling, and uh, it's going to be hard for them, even if they get a positive ruling going forward in two weeks, to then renege on some of these players' ability to play that, you know, either been denied or now have started playing with teams that I, I just uh, that, that's just a mess but obviously we're concerned about Marcus and what that means for him uh you know I don't know really what that means I mean e even if Marcus had received an affirmative ruling that he could play I don't know that he would play for BYU this year I think there's a lot of moving pieces going on behind the scenes as to, to whether or not he would and what the you know how they want to use him and he you know he i would like to see him play just to see him play in the next couple of weeks even if it's for a couple minutes i don't think it'll be anything more than that but th that is to say there's there's things going on it's not just as simple as saying oh he can play now so he'll play there, there's other considerations and uh and i'm not really the right person to, to <laughs> answer what those are but i think uh, I mean, I don't know what harm it would do to just see him play a few minutes here and there in these next couple of weeks. I think it would be it would be a good opportunity for him. So that was basically a non-answer, but uh, more important people than me need to figure that stuff out, Jason. All right, well, so you had touched on, and look, nobody wants to lose ever, and it certainly hurts a little bit more <laughs> when it's to the, uh, the team in red, but BYU did not take a big hit for that at all. In, in fact, look, Look, maybe, maybe we're just trying to find the silver lining here, but there, if there's a good loss in terms of the metrics, it probably is one of those. And, and again, you never want to lose. And trust me, it hurt that night. But in big picture, what does Saturday's loss at Utah really mean for BYU? Well, Utah did a favor for BYU in that they're actually a decent team this year. Uh, they've got a lot of size, and, and uh, you know, their, their numbers are – are good enough so you can go on the road and play there and, and not take a big hit much like going on the road in big 12 conference you could lose and you, you we won't take a big hit there BYU's done themselves a favor to kind of get in the conversation get in that top 25 so as long as they don't lose games they really shouldn't like tonight i mean this is a game they should not lose and so if they're if they're winning those games and and, and uh, taking care of business at home they won't take big hits, and, and that's that's nice. And BYU's put themselves in a nice situation in, in that regard. And, and I think also, I mean, let's. Uh, it's amazing how little we talk about this. That Fusini Traore is not playing. Yeah. I mean, he arguably is your best player. And if you tell me he's not worth at least four points at at Utah, then I'll say you're crazy. And imagine if Utah had to play that game without Brandon Carlson, for instance. I mean. It, it, that, that's a big hit for BYU. BYU hasn't talked about it a lot because they've had a lot of success even without Fusini. But Fusini is a dominant force, especially in the paint. That's where BYU was really hurt, especially in that first half in, in the paint. So, I mean, I, I think that's probably another consideration that BYU was playing without him and uh, still was able to have a chance at the end to tie or win that game. So we got about a minute left. Uh, thoughts on Denver? Is it, is it let Bruner do his thing and stop everyone else, or stop Bruner and let everybody else go off? What's what's the game plan tonight? Do you think against a team like Denver that has one of the nation's best scores in Bruner? Yeah, I think you try to stop Bruner uh, and uh, Tuco Tynamo. I, I I think he's another player. They they're both really good three point shooters. They both get to the free throw line a lot. So what you want to do is take those two guys. Make sure you're contesting threes with them. And then not fouling them, not bailing them out. It's 
they're trying to be the James Harden, you know, shoot the three or take it and get fouled and get to the free throw line. So th- that's really the key is to not to not foul on those guys and then uh, make sure you're contesting threes from those guys. Don't let them get hot because a player like that can take over a game if he gets hot. Thanks, my friend. It's always a pleasure. No, no, Jason. <laughs> Pleasure's mine. Okay. Thank you. That is the great Mark Durant. He'll be on the call with Greg Rubel, who you will hear in just a few minutes. Go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Quick timeout. We'll get you a quick update on top 25 college hoops when we return on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. With more Mountain America, Cougar Pregame Live, here's Jason Shepard. All right, two top 25 teams in action right now. Number 25, Northwestern, leading Chicago State 27-18. And number 15, Florida Atlantic, big over Florida International. It is 60-27 in the second half. Later on tonight, Utah State at Santa Clara. Weaver State at Nevada, both games tipping at 8 p.m. Plus the Jazz back at home at the Delta Center tonight. Hosting the Knickerbockers will be following all those scores throughout the evening. We're going to get you to the Marriott Center next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Zions Bank, for 150 years of helping you succeed, Zions Bank is for you. Let's take you courtside and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar basketball fans. We welcome you courtside inside the Marriott Center on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah, as tonight... The 18th-ranked BYU Cougars are in bounce-back mode, coming off a weekend setback at Utah by hosting the Pioneers from Denver in Game 1 of a season-long five-game homestand. I'm Greg Rubel of your play-by-play call tonight, joined by my 27-season partner on the headset, the former BYU hoopster himself, the one, the only, Mark Durant. And, uh, Mark, uh, BYU had its, uh, well, its worst game of the season, really, at a bad time. Uh, Yet the Cougars still had a shot to win in Salt Lake City on Saturday. So the shots were not falling, uh, but BYU showed... It's going to find a way to stay in the fight, which they did. And that was, I think, a positive emerging from a negative outcome. Yeah, even though they lost that game and shot poorly, there still were a lot of very good numbers. One was the bench play. One was uh, the ability to rebound, offensive rebounding. Uh, they played they played very hard. They, they, they did a lot of good things that, that had got them to this position. So even though they did shoot poorly, they weren't a chance to win that game. And, and that, that that's important to me because they've gone to this three-point shooting idea shoot a lot of them and you're going to have off shooting nights like they had at utah the other night but what you want is even if you do have a bad shooting night to still be in the game and they did some things that were uncharacteristic the the assist numbers were low they kind of forced the issue a little bit i think got a little bit panicky so there were some things they could really learn from that while still doing a lot of the good things that had got them there so i think that was even though it was a loss and it, it sucks to lose to those guys I think maybe moving forward, that, that game will really help this team. We hope so. My pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope is coming up next as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to hear from BYU head coach Mark Pope as we return to the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. Here's Greg Rubel. All right, the BYU in Denver tipping at top of the hour. BYU 8-1 and one on the season, 5-0 and oh at home. DU is 6-4, and 2-3 and three in away games. Tonight's game opening a five-game home set for BYU. The Cougs' 13-game non-conference win streak came to an end on Saturday at Utah, as did BYU's nine-game December win streak. Time now for my pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope, presented by Zions Bank. For 150 years, Zions Bank has been serving the communities where you live, work, and play. For financial experience you can count on, for the next 150 years, Zions Bank is for you. Tonight, I asked Coach Pope about a, a, a contrast in styles between the three-point reliant BYU and a Denver team which makes its living at the free throw line. Yeah, the team's constructed in a really, really effective way. Each of the guys has a very, very clear, established role, and, and they, they uh, help each other. What makes Tommy Bruner so special at 24 a game? Well, he's, he's just an elite-level shooter off the bounce from any type of range. Um, 
he is, uh, you know, he's, he's deadly from beyond the arc, and and then he gets to the free throw line, and that's that's a really great combination. I mean, if you think about offensive efficiency in a traditional sense, it's free throws and threes, and that's what he does. Their defensive numbers aren't great, but they will show different defensive looks at you through the course of the game. Yeah, they do a good job keeping guys off balance, um, trying to make you explore and, and try and understand what you're attacking from possession to possession. They did go into Fort Collins and had a ranked team on the ropes there for a bit. Yep. Um, you know, 10 minutes left that, you know, in the game, they're up. And this is, a, this is a Colorado State team that it's really hard to get sideways. They're, you know, they have a very deliberate style and deliberate pace. And so for them to go in there and, and, and put that game on them like that is really impressive. And it's, it's certainly um, a sign of the potency of this team. Okay. Uh, starting the same group, I presume. Personnel-wise, Foose still not not ready to go. Any any window on on availability there? No, but he's he's doing much better. Uh, he's he's made some some massive progress, and so um, we're hopeful. Okay, and then finally with uh, Dawson Baker getting closer, I guess we'd ask how close. And then with today's waiver ruling, Marcus Adams comes into the mix somehow or another, at least yeah. technically. What about those two guys? Yeah, Dawson is looking the best he's been. He's he's pain free right now, which is a huge for him because he's played with pain for a year and a half. And so um, we'll you know we, we kind of have to you know he's showing great signs. We're trying to be as cautious as we can bringing him back so that this time out is not wasted time. We just don't want it to be wasted time and. And uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a you know another landmark shift in in uh, you know right now in college basketball, um, at least 14 day uh, injunction, uh, you know suspending uh, transfer penalties, and so um, we you know we're still trying to just hit this morning. We're still trying to make sure that we've dotted the i's and crossed the t's. But Marcus was in full shoot around today, and we'll see as soon as we get clearance. We'll see what we can do. We're not going to see either guy tonight, though, as a player? Uh, I don't think so. We, we won't see either one tonight. Okay. Well, Coach, thank you for the preview. We'll talk to you post-game. Good luck. Thanks, Rick. All right, that's Mark Pope leading us into tonight's Keys to the Game, brought to you by your local Ford stores. BYU basketball built Ford proud. Mark Durant, what are your keys for BYU and DU tonight? Well, Greg, I know you're a Swifty, and so I, I'm going to go with uh, I'm feeling 22 tonight. So 22, I want at least 22 assists. <laughs> BYU's assists the other night were terrible. I want 22. And then I want to keep the star for Den- the Denver Pioneers, Tommy Bruner, under 22. His average is 24. He's a elite scorer. For, B- for them to win, there, he's going to have to have a huge night like he did at CSU the other night. So keep him under 22. You should be fine tonight. All right. As we go to break, we remind you to go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show coming up next, live from the Marriott Center in Provo on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The Cougar Tip-Off Show is also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic taste of BYU ice cream, now also in a convenient pint. Also brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Let's head live to the All-Pro Capital Courtside Seats, alongside Mark Durant. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again. Happy holidays, Cougar Nation. We're live from courtside at the Marriott Center for some midweek hoops. 18th-ranked BYU hosting Denver, these border neighbors, meeting for the 68th time all-time, but the first time in 24 years. It's been 25 years since the Cougs and Pioneers have last played here in Provo. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Rubel, Mark Durant for play-by-play and commentary. Our studio host is Jason Shepard. Our coordinating producer is Terry South. Our studio control board operators are James Finlayson and Ethan Arkell. Studio editor is Soraya Ritchie. Our BYU radio engineer, Barry Squires, and you are tuned in on the new skin, BYU Sports Network, led by our satellite radio flagship, BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143, and our over-the-air flagship, KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. We're also on the BYU Radio app and at byuradio.org. Well, the cliche is... Live by the three, die by the three. And uh, while BYU's been about more than just three-point shooting, there's little doubt that uh, BYU's cold start from the arc and really game-long struggles from deep uh, were chief culprits in the Cougars' loss at Utah. BYU shot a season-low 23% from the arc on a season-low seven threes made. 
Mark, when you're averaging almost 14 threes a game, hitting seven means too much of your offense has gone missing. Well, oddly, part of the problem was that BYU had not shot poorly all season long. And so when that happened, they were taken a little bit off guard and I think were slow to adjust to what they had to do to win that game. They made the the defensive adjustments at halftime. In the second half, they didn't rely on the three as much. They shot a little better from three, and they didn't rely on it as much. Actually won the points in the paint battle against Utah with all those seven-footers. So they made the adjustments. I just think they were taken off guard by, wait, this hasn't happened to us before. And so hopefully in the future when it does happen, which it will, they can make the adjustments quicker and find a way to win game other than knocking down the threes. All right, it's BYU and Denver here tonight. And coming up after this break, we'll hear from Denver's head coach, Jeff Wolbrun. As the BYU Store Cougar tip-off show rolls on from the Marriott Center on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back courtside and rejoin Greg Rubel. This indeed is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. Looking ahead to BYU and Denver, the Pioneers had won four games in a row before falling in Fort Collins one week ago tonight. DU went to nationally ranked CSU and led by four at the break before losing by ten in the end. But it was a five game, a five point game in the final minute of that game. With the loss, said Denver's now dropped fourteen in a row against ranked teams. The Pioneers' last win over a team in the top twenty-five came almost fifty-three years ago. The head coach of the Pioneers is Jeff Wolbrun. His team went on a late first half flurry one week ago in Fort Collins to turn a late first half eight-point deficit into a lead at halftime before ultimately falling short. And a short time ago, I asked Coach Wolbrun how much confidence his team can take from last Wednesday's performance as the Pioneers prepare to play in Provo. You know, I said going into it, it would be a valuable experience for us and, and our kids and our program, and I think it served to be that. Uh, we played very well in the first half on both ends of the court, shot the ball well, had eight threes at the end of the first half, and, and defended well, and put ourselves in position to win the game. And that, I think we had too many defensive miscues down the stretch and, and in the second half, our ball screen defense. And But um, we played very well uh, against a, a ranked team, and uh, I, I think it was a valuable experience. It um, was somewhat of a confidence booster, I'm sure, to our players. Uh, they played in a hostile environment, uh, uh, and, uh, and they performed very well. I think when they stepped between the lines, they had the mindset to win and not just guard somebody's actions, but to shut them down. And uh, I, was, I was pleased with what I saw from a competitive spirit standpoint and then also tactically. But when you play a ranked team and a really good team like Colorado State or BYU, your, your strengths show up, but so do your deficiencies. And they were crystal clear, and we've been working on those for the last week. What do you expect out of a Marriott Center experience tonight? Yeah, uh, similar, uh, very difficult place to play. I've been here over the years at, at other schools, and it's a great, it's a great home court advantage. Uh, Mark and his staff have put together a great team. I mean, they're one of the best in the country offensively, the uh, highest scoring teams in the country. Uh, they're just excellent in transition, and we have to try to do several things to keep them out of transition. Got to keep them off the offensive glass. They're one of the best teams that hit the offensive boards. They just do so many things well, and they surround you with four to five elite-level three-point shooters at all times. So they stretch the floor, and then when you get, you're get you out taking threes away, they back cut you, and they're just great. Uh, they're just the, the kids understand how to play. They play together. They play unselfish. They're very deserving of their national ranking. Tommy Bruner is is clearly somebody that uh, everyone can key on. He's number three right now in, in points per game. He does so much of his work as your entire team does at the free throw line. How much of that free throw uh, component of your game is, is straight tactics? Like that's how we want to play. Yeah, we want to attack the paint for sure, and uh, it, it's it is by design that uh, Tommy gets to the free throw line as often as he does, and our team does. But we we have to understand when that's a good shot and when it isn't. And if he's taking the ball to the basket against one opponent, that's a good shot for Tommy. Uh, if he's taking the ball to the basket against multiple defenders, those are the ones that we need to kick out. We do get a lot of our shots blocked. And, uh, and that's, I think, 
with the maturity of our basketball team will understand when when those shots are good ones and when we need to kick them out for threes or one mores and in uh, multiple paint touches within a possession all right well coach that's a great preview thank you for the time and good luck to your team this season yeah thank you very much my pleasure All right, Coach Jeff Wolbrin and our National Anthem. BYU fans, if you've ever had any cars on the injured reserve list, Doug Smith-Kia has some promising new prospects on their lot in American Fork. To see the full scouting report, visit DougSmithKia.com. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on right after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This song doesn't have a name, but if it did, it would probably be something about togetherness because it's a collaboration not between pop stars and producers, but between music therapy. Welcome back to the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Hey, Greg and Mark with you courtside for BYU in Denver. Another game without Fuseni Traore, who's missing his fourth straight game since being injured in the Las Vegas against NC State. Mark, BYU's been shooting well enough from the arc to deflect any attention away from the Cougars' lack of a traditional post presence that uh, that Fus gives you. But uh, the Cougars need him back, clearly. Uh, neither Noah Waterman nor, uh, Atiki, uh, nor Ali Khalifa uh, play a true back-to-the-basket game. Ali Atiki, Ali Atiki, Atiki, Ali Atiki isn't a major minutes guy. Uh, so the hope has to be that Fus gets back in time for Big 12 play. Coach Pope in pregame said he's getting closer, he's making progress. He's clearly integral uh, to BYU's ability to be as competitive as it wants to be in the Big 12. Would have made a huge difference the other night. Uh, but I think Big 12 teams are going to look at that film and, and see an approach on how to play BYU. That'll be to really extend on the three-point shooters and have a shot blocker back defending the, the rim. And so you need a guy that can have play back to the basket and, and suck in that defense a little bit. Without Foos, that's going to be kind of the formula to attack BYU in conference play. All right, final word or two before tip-off is coming up after this. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Here's Greg Rubel. All right, tip-off for BYU in Denver, just around the corner. Mark, uh, it's shoot-around today. Marcus Adams was taking part. Dawson Baker was taking part. Marcus, of course, is more of a procedural issue. Dawson is a health-related issue. But either way, you could see some new faces in the lineup sometime soon for BYU. Well, I don't know how much we'll see from Marcus, but I just like a taste. I mean, I, he, he's such an appealing prospect, and I've just heard so many things about Dawson that I, I think he's going to have a huge impact on this team. So let's get those guys on the floor. Yeah, maybe you see Dawson Baker as soon as Saturday. That would be the hope. And then, uh, again, Marcus Adams, Coach Mark Pope said, is more of a uh, crossing eyes and uh, crossing T's and dotting I's situation to get the true clearance. Maybe he does get a few games in before the next ruling comes on the transfer issue or the waiver issue. So we'll see what transpires there. Either way, a deep BYU team could be getting deeper and of course Foos is uh, coming back at some point as well all right tip off of BYU in Denver coming up next this has been the BYU store Cougar tip-off show on the new skin BYU sports network